Hey, how's everybody doing out there? It's Thursday, time for our video follow through. We are in Romans 10, verse 13. And today I want to talk about name tags and labels and all those other kinds of things that we put on to ourselves and we put on to other people. And we do it sometimes without even thinking about it. Now, uh, just a good old fashioned name tag makes a lot of sense, right? You're at a conference or you know, you're at church and you want people that don't know you to know who you are and maybe you want to know who they are. It's great. It, it honors the other person, right? But the other labels that we like to put on that have to do with what political party, what theological uh, you know, viewpoint we have, what kind of worship do we prefer, what kind of church do we prefer, what denomination we're in, you know, I mean, the list, it gets kind of tiring, doesn't it? When you, when you begin to sort of check off all those boxes and you, right, you have all the different categories that we put people in. And seeing the problem with those is, yeah, they do help us to understand who somebody is and what they're about and maybe might be sort of helpful as we're talking. But quite often it just leads to arguing, doesn't it? It leads to, I think, finally, to people being excluded, uh, people being looked down upon, judged, whatever you want to call it. And so I think sometimes the labels aren't real helpful. Now, it might, it might be helpful for you to understand who you are and say, yeah, this is what I'm about. But when you begin to use that to exclude others and look down on others, right, you have something that happened uh, that was kind of common in Paul's day, right? And it's what he's dealing with in Romans chapter 10. Right, so grab your Bibles, let's open up and let's look at that. Now, in, in chapter 9, he is, uh, Paul's talking about his people, right? He's talking about the, the people of God, the, the people of Israel, and he's like, Boy, I wish that they would believe in Jesus and be saved. That's his heart's desire. He knows that that's God's heart's desire, is that they would know him. But, but he said, but, but so many of them just cannot accept who Jesus is. They just reject who he is. And Paul's like, I, I'm, I'm not going to throw that aside, Jesus aside. Right, so that there's some other way that they could be saved. He says, I wish there was, but there's not. He's the way, the truth, and the life, right? He is the, the one who died for us, the promised Messiah, right? The Savior, that's him. And it's awesome, and he came for us. And here's the point that he wants to make today is that he came for everyone. It's just a simple word that, that, that very often I forget, or I just interpret it kind of in a way that works for me. Now, here, now here's what I mean. Um, when, when you look at Romans 10, especially in verse 12, which is right before our verse, he's saying, look, with God, there's no distinction at all. And, and his classic distinction then was not Lutheran versus Baptist or, or something like that. It was Jews versus Gentiles. And so Jews were the religious ones and they thought they had it right. And, and anyone who was not of that camp was excluded, was looked down upon, was really kind of rejected in a lot of ways. And so he's saying, look, God's in Christ, God has gotten rid of those distinctions. In fact, he says he lavishes, he bestows his gifts on all who call on him. He doesn't check your card and say, who, who, well, which side are you on? Right? Are, are you a Republican? Are you a Democrat? Are you conservative? Are you, are you liberal? No, he's not saying that at all. He's saying there's kind of, for humanity, there's kind of one category, and that is sinners. All of us. Remember Paul said earlier in Romans that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. All have sinned. All have failed to do what God had, you know, demands of us. That we have all failed to attain that perfection. And so we all need Jesus. And, and here's the thing though in verse 13 is that he died for all of us. And so everyone, there's that word, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. See, I, I, we, we correctly interpret that to mean that, yeah, if you call on him, he'll save you, right? He loves you. You're, you're never too far from him. And I think that's important. But, but I think he, he, it's even bigger than that. He's saying even those people that you don't think deserve it, they're, they're in the same category. They're outcasts like you, right? They, they don't deserve it and you don't deserve it. And yet he gives the gift to us. And yes, he, yet he gave his life for us. And so to me, I think that empowers us, it encourages us. In some ways, it might even challenge or, or convict us when we're being selective, when we're making various distinctions and, and making different classes of people and, and people who are more worthy or less worthy of our time and of God's love. Paul says, uh-uh, no distinctions. All, everyone who calls on him is gonna be saved. So I pray that that brings you hope for you, but also 
that, that it makes you change the, it makes, it makes you look at the people around you differently. As not people to be judged or put into a category or have a label slapped on them, but as people who need Jesus and for whom God gave his very life, all right? So have a great rest of your Thursday and we'll see you tomorrow for another video follow through.